I found a fish cake lurking at the back of my freezer yesterday. So I'm going to cook up a fish cake, which I'm going to do in a frying pan, and I'm going to make a load of mash with it, because I'm just in the mood for mash. It's, uh, it's getting on towards the end of April. We've had some lovely days. Uh, today is not one of them. It's quite cold. It's about 15, 16. Very overcast. Rain, rain, rain. And yeah, it's just not fun. Anyway, so I'm going to cook this up. I'm going to prep this, should I say. And whilst I do that, I'm going to talk to you about something. It's something that I was... Uh, I think I was watching something on YouTube. That's right, it was a post that I came across and it was about drive throughs about how drive throughs like drive through restaurants, psychologically trick you into spending more money than you normally would because of the way they're designed, etc. And... She made an interesting point about how if you want convenience, you just have to learn to live with spending more money. So I thought I would just talk about how if, if you want to save money, you are going to have to sacrifice convenience because convenience comes at a price. And I'm sure if, you, if you're living the average UK lifestyle, if you had a look at your spending, you would see how much convenience you pay for. So I did make some notes on this because I will forget to say things. And of course, there are lots of other things that I will have probably forgotten to say that you'll think, oh yeah, but you forgot that. Because I don't do any of these things. To live my life as cheaply, as frugally, as carefully as I do, I've sacrificed convenience. And what happens is that as you learn to sacrifice the convenience and you get used to a slower pace of life, you know, we're, we're told that everything has to be fast, everything has to be now, everything has to be yesterday, everything must arrive today. It doesn't. You have to learn to adapt, you have to slow down, and you can adjust your lifestyle to match that. You don't have to stick with this horrific rat race. So, I'm going to start cutting up potatoes, and I shall talk to you about this. So, first thing, go to a supermarket. Now, obviously, when I say all these things, I am talking about people who are physically able. I am talking about people who don't live in the middle of nowhere and have no transport. Let's be honest about this. Uh, if you are housebound, if you live in the middle of nowhere and you have no transport and you can't get to things like supermarkets, obviously you have to use these services and that's the price you pay. And it may be that you've lived somewhere your entire life and you used to have shops locally so you didn't have to worry about convenience because you could walk to the grocers like the green grocers and the butchers and the news agents and maybe your town or your village has lost all those things because big supermarkets came along took all their business and they had to close down and now you're stranded and then they took away your bus service this happens so much it really does so i'm not talking to you people because you are the ones who are the real victims of the system that will leave you behind but if you can get to a supermarket if you have a car or you live close enough to walk physically go to a supermarket don't get the delivery they charge you for the delivery so you might be complaining about how much the price of food has gone up. But if you're still, still paying anything between, say, three and seven pounds for a delivery, then that is going to make a huge difference to your food budget because you've just added all that extra money on that you didn't need to because you couldn't be bothered to walk or you couldn't be bothered to divide your weekly shop into, say, 
um, maybe two trips that you could carry it all. Take a shopping trolley. You can still buy shopping trolleys on wheels. Um, just be practical about it. The second one is opt for slower postage. I never pay for same day delivery. I never pay for next day delivery. Most of the time I will opt for second class postage or whatever the standard postage is on things. I plan ahead, you know, I have in my mind, I don't need whatever I'm buying right now. I can wait for it to turn up. However, most things, if they're posted first class, will turn up in three or four days if I'm buying from eBay. Second class might take a week. But I never purchase thinking, oh, I need that tomorrow. I always think, oh, well, I'm going to need that in a few weeks. I'll buy it now. It's not difficult to plan. Think, use your brain, look at your calendar, where are you going, what are you doing, plan ahead, go for slower purchase. It'll save you money. And very often, the slower purchase um, uh, postage is free. So whenever I buy standard postage or second class, very often in places like eBay, um, it'll be free. So I won't have to pay for that. Walk places instead of driving. If you live in an area where you can walk to places, walk to them. Don't drive to the supermarket if you know you can walk there. It's good exercise. You're not going to be adding extra to your fuel bill and you're not adding extra wear and tear. It's good to get out, get the fresh air, walk to places. The, uh, although I have a supermarket five minutes over the road, I have another one that's 15 minutes down the road. And if the weather's really nice and I have a quiet day, I'll walk to the next nearest, which is an hour away, which means I had a two hour walk. But obviously I'm not buying a massive load of shopping on that. So, you know, you can plan those things and just do things slower. This is the key to convenience and not having convenience and not feeling like you have to have everything now it's about slowing your life down which is good for you you know we're kind of encouraged that oh you must do everything very very fast and everything must be now and it really doesn't it just doesn't the next one is to do with um tv habits and things so stop the subscriptions you don't have to watch a TV series the second it's available in America because you had Sky or Netflix or something else. You can wait until it appears on your regular TV. There are other ways to get TV programs before they show on your local broadcast as well. But subscription packages which offer you everything in one place, the convenience of everything at the touch of a button, are really expensive. I cannot believe how expensive subscription packages are for what the same rubbish that's on all the other channels already it's just crazy i'd never pay for one of those they're just such a waste of money i don't know how people afford them for what they are i mean how often unless you're a serious tv addict how often are you actually watching enough of that subscription package to get your money's worth out of it seriously and half the stuff on there is really old anyway i mean when i look at the live just the live tv the the number of repeats is just insane right that's my chopped potatoes ready on the steamer and i shall put those on when i'm ready to go and then that's my little saucepan for my fish cake uh, the other thing is learn how to cook. Don't get those stupid food subscription boxes. The internet is all the information of the world at your fingertips. There are so many cooking sites, so many recipe sites, and I really think we're losing the art of how to cook stuff. And it's just so satisfying to eat something that you've made from scratch rather than buying a convenience meal, something you stick in a microwave, something that's already there, pre-packaged and fully made. And whenever I eat ready-made food, it doesn't happen very often, uh, it's always so disappointing because it just tastes so bland and they fill it with rubbish and it's so unhealthy. 
and it's fake tastes and it's round with sugar and salt and E numbers and preservatives and other flavourings. I mean, food doesn't, prepackaged food doesn't even taste like food anymore. I remember ready meals never used to be as bad as they are now. They're just so disappointing. So I always scratch cook and I've self-taught that. I wasn't taught how to scratch cook when I was a kid. Um, my mum used to cook a lot from scratch and she doesn't so much now because my mum doesn't enjoy cooking but um, I was never taught I was never brought up to cook everything from scratch it's something that I have learnt because it's cheaper and because it's satisfying but again you have to plan you need to plan your week learn how to slow down and adjust your lifestyle to suit and it will save you a lot of money uh, and on that note if you go out to work Pack a lunch. You don't have to go and buy a Starbucks coffee on the way. Buy yourself a thermos mug. Make your own coffee and take it with you. Pack a lunch. Don't go and buy it at lunchtime because it will cost you an absolute fortune. Um, take a reusable water bottle. I don't know where mine is at the moment. There it is. I take this every time I leave the house and I will drink a litre of water every time I go out and it's healthy for you water is good for you hydration is very important it's good for your energy levels it's good for your concentration and your body needs water it does not need coffee it does not need caffeine it does not need energy drinks and it doesn't need um, sugared carbonated drinks it needs this stuff it just needs water and you're already paying for the water that comes out your taps you pay your water bills why wouldn't you just drink the stuff that already comes out the tap don't buy bottled water, it's an absolute rip-off. And on that note, the problem is that everything that comes from retailers and the way shops now work is designed to make you lazy. It's designed to make you want everything quickly with minimum effort. It requires that you don't plan ahead, that you can say, oh, you know, I haven't got anything out of the freezer for dinner tonight. I'll just go to McDonald's drive through on the way home or I'll order a takeaway on delivery and get it delivered. You have to get your life in order. You have to learn to slow down. You have to plan things. We're always living on the edge of, I haven't done this. Oh, I'll just get that because I didn't plan ahead. And you need to take control of your life. Yes, you may have a busy life. You might be working a nine to five job and have two kids at school who, you know, you have to plan around them as well. But you can do it. You just have to, you have to want it for a start. If you want it enough, you will do it. And the money that you can save by relinquishing that speed and that convenience is noticeable. But it takes time and you can't do all this in one go. So let's say you want to get rid of convenience in your life, but it just seems really overwhelming. Do one thing at a time. So maybe you start with, I'm going to get disciplined about packing a lunch and taking lunch to work instead of buying. You get used to making your coffee and taking it with you when you go to catch the train or the bus. You've packed your lunch probably the night before plan it ahead, you take your box out or your bag out the fridge in the morning and you pack it and you take it. Get used to doing that as a routine and at the point where you stop thinking about it and it becomes a part of your life, then you can add the next layer and maybe that next layer is going to the supermarket instead of getting delivery and you plan when you're going to do that and it may be that it's easier to do two or three smaller shops on the way home from work. It may be that two shops at the weekend are doable. Uh, the supermarkets are open at all sorts of times now and if the store is close enough that you can get to it, and maybe you do need to drive to it because you're trying to buy a lot of shopping and you can't carry it all. I do regular small top-up shops because I'm looking for deals and discounts so you need to go regularly but 
you can still plan ahead even for your main shop and even if you're not looking for discounts even if you're just buying straight off the shelf so then you get used to doing that regularly and it may be that you do a once a month massive shop and you'll dip in and do little top ups on the way through the week like milk plan ahead if you've got a big enough freezer buy your milk in bulk stick it in the freezer you uh, you can do the same with vegetables you could buy lots of fresh veg in one go dice it up blanch it stick it in the freezer then it's all there for the next month and it may be that you decide i can do that but i need more space i've got space for a new freezer maybe i'll get a small chest freezer something like that it just makes life so easy if you have those things to hand then it makes it easier to plan to meal prep to plan maybe you need to plan your meals for the week i don't do that because i base all my meals around what i can get on discount on the yellow stickers so that dictates how my meals will look for the week but i'm used to just going there buying things and then working out as i go but i have a much slower lifestyle now so i can do that um, and then once you've successfully done that maybe you start to think about well now that i'm planning meals better and i'm more organized i can ditch the takeaways or maybe we do less takeaways but we go and get it we don't get it delivered that's going to save you money and all these little things you can layer up over a long period of time i haven't always been the way i am now it's taken years for me to get it right i mean i started doing like growing my own veg and things you know 15 years ago but it wasn't until I moved here into my own place and I was in complete control of my own spending that I was able to start embracing things like using less energy, walking more, um, scratch cooking, buying the food that I wanted or that I could afford rather than having to think about other people in the house. And it might be you need to re-educate your taste buds as well. One of the problems with uh, processed food is that it's full of all the things that you get addicted to. So salt and sugar addictive, a lot of the fats and the, um, the emulsifiers and things that they put into convenience food is designed to be addictive. It's why you keep going back to Pizza Hut, why you keep going back to KFC or McDonald's or you need that Starbucks coffee. It's because everything is loaded up with all the things that are dopamine hits to your brain you can re-educate your brain it's it's like any addiction like you drink less you stop smoking you stop smoking weed whatever it is you can re-educate your brain and your taste buds to see food in a different way because food is an addiction like anything else retailers use food as a weapon they use it as a way to keep you coming back takeaway companies fast food companies have got you hooked on this rubbish because your brain cannot stop eating sugar and salt and all the high processed stuff that is literally designed to be as addictive as possible so that you can't let it go if you can learn to take a step back from that you will f and particularly if you start to scratch cook and understand what food what real food actually tastes like you will start to want that stuff less anyway so that begins a cyclical reaction as you change your lifestyle you will find that you want things less i'm not interested in buying stuff on the internet i buy things if i really need them if it's a thing that i need um, rather than a want and i used to do shopping hauls i used to buy a lot of stuff online and again it's another addiction it's the hit that you get from making a purchase and i have learned that that's not a fun thing to do anymore and i don't especially enjoy shopping online i use it as a tool when i need it so there are certain things that i buy online which are cheaper than buying in the shops like certain dental products like um, i buy um, like the tp brushes um, that you clean in between your teeth and things very expensive in the shops you can buy them in bulk on places like ebay for half the price so i bulk buy and then i'll I'll probably buy those a few times a year. Certain specialist toothpaste, which are quite hard to get, you can buy in bulk on eBay. So I will buy things that I need, but I want to save money on them because the shops generally are really expensive. 
So I'm always looking for, for ways to, to save money on, on things that I need rather than want. But you don't have to get your buzz from making the purchase. Find other ways to enjoy life. You know, there's there's a whole world out there. If if you're getting your buzz from buying cheap rubbish online, that, you know, the enjoyment goes from it the second it turns up through the door. What's the point? Take apart your life. If, you, if you're not sure where to start with this, list everything that you do over the course of a week. Maybe you need to document it. I would love it if someone did this as a journey and documented it on YouTube. So started from, right, I need to change my life. I need to curb my spending. I need to, to slow my life down. This is what my life is now and this is how I'm going to deal with it. And if you take it apart over the course of a week, so start on your Monday morning, list or document, record it, whatever you want to do, all the things that you do and then break it down and look at how messy it is. Look at the things that you can stop doing, like buying the morning coffee on the way to work. Like, um, instead of planning your meals for the week, you sat in front of Netflix for three hours watching stuff you didn't even want to see in the first place. These are all things that you can do, but do it gradually. If you just try and do everything at once, it'll be a massive overwhelm and you will give up because it's too much. So do what I did, which is you take one small aspect at a time and as you get interested in doing more, you'll start reading more, you'll find YouTube channels of how people do things and you'll pick up new tips and you can add that. And before you know it, you've got a very layered system. So I find it really hard to explain how I live my life now and how I do things because it's taken a long time to get here and I've added tiny elements as I've gone along. As things have become easier and have become part of my life, I'll add a new element if I see something that inspires me or I think, yeah, I can fit that into my life, that makes sense, uh, that'll save me a couple of quid a week, that sort of thing. So be kind to yourself at the same time. Don't feel that you have to do everything. We have this idea that you have to change your life overnight like that. It's ridiculous. You can't do it. You cannot do it, especially when you are being bombarded left, right and centre all the time with all these things that you're trying to filter out like the advertising, ban advertising. Okay, if you want to clear your mind, ban advertising, so use ad blockers online, don't let yourself sit through the adverts on TV, I hit the mute button as soon as the ads come on and I go and do something else. Uh, ad blockers a good one, get rid of all that rubbish on the internet, I use ad block and ghostery, they are both really good. Um, they seem to be now working again on YouTube. I haven't seen a, an advert on YouTube in probably a couple of months now, so I don't know if they've given up on me. <laughs> I don't seem to be getting any adverts and no warnings about ad blocks, so maybe the pushback by people has worked. Um, ban the news. Ban the news because it's like doom scrolling. If you allow that to go into your brain constantly, it will change your mental health. It'll change your well-being. Just because there are bad things going on in the world, it doesn't mean you have to listen to it. Unless you can physically go and change something, unless you're planning to go out and fight the war or you can deal with an issue, don't follow it because all you're doing is worrying yourself about things you cannot change in the world. I banned the news again. I go through phases and then I realise that I'm being overwhelmed by it and I ban it. So I banned the news, I think about a month and a half ago now, and I just feel so much better. I have no idea what goes on in the world anymore and it doesn't matter because it doesn't affect me. What I see is what I need to know and that mostly comes from the YouTube channels that I follow. But I don't really follow news channels. I follow cultural stuff. I do follow a few politics channels, but I'm very selective about what I listen to on them. There are certain things that just don't do anything for me. Certain things I don't even care about. I don't need to know about. Let someone else fight that battle. So I'm quite selective and I streamline. Stop doom scrolling. This is what I see with my mum, who is absolutely hooked on GB News, 
and believes everything they say and gets incredibly wound up about everything and very shouty about things that go on in the world, things that she cannot change, things that she will never be able to change and things that the people involved in those things don't care what my mum thinks about it. They are things that do not affect her in life but she insists on watching it all day, every day, bang, 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 non-stop and I swear it's making her insane. I'm quite concerned and you, you do need to look at your own behaviour. If you are being overwhelmed by the news, please, or if you know someone in, in your life who is being overwhelmed by the news, um, disconnect the channels. Because again, it's an addiction. Doom scrolling is an addiction. And us as humans, we are hardwired for addiction of all kinds. And we will find addiction where it never used to exist. So be very aware of how you live your life. Dissect your life. Look at all the elements of your life. And we're going a bit off tangent here. This was all about if you get rid of convenience, you can save money. And now I've started going on to mental wellness again. But they're, they're kind of all interlocked because once you get rid of one thing, you find you can get rid of the next. And as you find your life feels lighter and slower and less cluttered, you will add things to that. So I'm going to stop now because I, I've spoken far longer than I planned to. I haven't even switched on my steamer yet. Let's put that on. Let's put the right ring on. Always helps. Um, yeah, it's like planning my mashed potato lunch. Love a bit of that. And I hope you have a good day. Take this to heart. If you know in your heart that you need to make changes, if you know that your life needs streamlining, here's a good place to start. Start with getting rid of convenience, learn to slow down, your body will slow down, your mind will slow down, and then you can start picking apart the other aspects of your life. That's how I did it. And I cannot imagine ever going back to the way things were before. Life, life is distressed, it's decluttered, filter out all the rubbish that you don't need. It takes time, but it's worth the effort. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.